In this lesson, we'll be using the editing tools on the timeline. Okay, so we've got our first clip right in here, and we've just kind of dropped that into place. But right now, it's not really what I want. Let me show you why. If I just come through here and kind of start scrubbing, you can see we just have too much um, that we're working with here. And actually, the story we're going to tell is going to be kind of three little shots that come together. We're going to have this lady kind of start out like she's on her phone. She's a little bit worried about something. Um, and we really only want to see her for a second. Then we've got this other piece of footage that we're going to have a dragon come in and swoop over some traffic. And then we're going to cut to the next scene that's more of like an aerial shot downtown where the dragon's going to land on one of the buildings and we're going to see some destruction and some some fiery dragon breath. So lots of fun stuff. But just with this first shot here, it doesn't really create any suspense to just see her on the phone here um, for all this time. So there's a specific part of the footage I want to isolate. So right here when she kind of looks up, it looks like she says, it's big. See that right there? It's big right there. So that's what the, that's the part that we want to get. So what I'd like to do is start using some of the editing tools to cut this clip down just so we have that one little part of her saying it's big. So let's kind of scrub forward right to where she just is about to look up. So we kind of start right here. And what we can do is bring our cursor over here to the edge. Now by default when we're in the timeline we are automatically choosing this multi-tool and you can see it's got a lot of tips for us if I hover over the multi-tool and really it can do just about anything that we can do with these other tools based on where the cursor is in relation to the clip. So if I'm in the middle, you can see this is just the typical move button. So I can kind of pull this back and forth however I want to move that clip around. Now, if I want to trim something, which is what we're trying to do here, I'm gonna come over to the edge and left click and drag it. And what's really awesome is that we get this nice little picture within a picture and what frame that is showing is where my cursor is on the timeline. So you can see how I'm moving this back and forth. That's showing the frames that I'm looking at. And if I come all the way up here to my current time indicator, right here where I scrubbed to, now that's the frame we're seeing in those two, that little frame within our bigger frame catch up and now they're showing the same frame. And now I wanna move this again and just pull it so it begins right there at zero. So we see her, it's big. And then right before she starts to say anything else, I'm gonna cut that. So right about here while her mouth is still kind of open. So I'm gonna come over here to this other end and trim that down to cut out all of the previous frames. So we've got those 25 little frames for her to just say that one little sentence, and then we can start adding more clips. So the next clip that I wanna add is the street level clip. So I'm gonna grab that and put that into place. Perfect. Now let's pull this over here to the left and let's just kind of drag through here, just scrub a little bit. And you can see this is gonna need some VFX because right now it's pretty boring, just a little traffic shot. It is, however, the exact length that I'm going to need. Maybe I could cut a little bit off of the end here, but for the most part, this is what I wanna see. So I'm gonna leave that alone, at least for now. Then I'm gonna grab my aerial clip. And we're gonna drop that on just after our street level clip. So you can see the progression as I scrubbed through. Now this clip, if I zoom out a little bit, I'm just using the wheel on my mouse to zoom out. You see this clip is super long and really it shows more than what we need. So I'm gonna cut this down a little bit to edit it. And with the idea that the dragon is gonna be landing on this building. So what I want to do is say, you know, right about here is where I wanna start seeing maybe the dragon kinda of come in, land on the building, and then we move to maybe like right here or so. So we just kinda of get the middle of this. So again, 
I'm going to do the same thing as before and just trim this. Okay, so you can kind of see what we've got here. Maybe that's a little bit too much off the end. And remember, I can see where I am scrubbing to like as I'm trimming this. So that's really, really helpful. because so I can say right about there, the building is at the bottom of the frame, but it hasn't gone too far out. I love that right there. And let's do something similar here at the beginning and say maybe right in there. Perfect. And now I'm just going to pull this back over there to the left and I can zoom back in and I can actually middle click my mouse to drag this just like that. So that's another way we can navigate that timeline. So now let's scrub through and see what we've got. Awesome. Really pretty easy little three progression shot. Now, this is a pretty simple edit, just three shots together, just trimming a little bit off the ends of a couple of these. But there's two other little tools that I'd like to go over with for you, just so you can see if you need them at some other point. And that first one is going to be the slip. So whenever I'm hovering over the bottom of a piece of footage, I can left click and drag. And you see how I trimmed a lot off the beginning and end of this clip. And so if I wanted to see some other frames, by clicking and dragging along the bottom of that, I'm dragging that frame range through this visible area of frames. So now I have a slightly different view. And you can see this 252, that's always going to be the same, but the amount of frames on the beginning or end can vary. So if you say, uh, you know, I'd like to see that a little bit later and then maybe have the building go out of frame, you can edit it like that. So maybe pull this back a little bit more. We see the building a little bit more in the middle and then it goes away. So lots of good choices for us there. I'm going to hit control Z. We'll see if that'll let us pull that back. Otherwise, I know that I wanted 151 frames on the beginning. So we'll just pull it back to that point. Perfect. Okay, another choice that we have while we're editing with the multi tool is the slide. And that is going to be the hover at the top. You can see it's a similar look to the button we see at the bottom. But the slide works a little bit differently. So what this means is that I can drag this and actually make it cover up some of that adjacent footage. So if I say, you know, I don't really like how slow this looks at the end of this clip. I want it to stop, you know, right around there or so. I can slide this by grabbing it at the top and pulling it over. And that's going to cover up the ending of that other piece of footage and cut to my third clip sooner. Great. Now there is another one that's a little bit different from the way that we're moving footage. It's a way that you can move a cut. So in my case, you know, let's say I really actually liked this and I don't want that to be covered up. I can roll my edit by pulling this back over here to the end. However, what we're getting now is a shortened clip for this second one because it basically just covered that back up. And I can move that edit point wherever I want it to go as long as it's within the bounds of those red lines because that is my shorter piece of footage. So it has to be within that span. Now, this one, I'm going to move back to about where I wanted it to be before. So I'm going to pull this over and kind of trim this here from the side. Remember, I wanted 151 frames from the beginning. So we're back to where we started. And that looks like a pretty good edit. Okay, so now that we have some editing done here on our timeline, let's move on to our next lesson where we're going to learn about a new feature in Nuke. And in Nuke Studio, we now have access to something called soft effects. And we're going to use those to match our colors and kind of create an initial grade to match some of these clips together. So stick around and we'll be learning how to use soft effects for grading in the next lesson.